Welcome to another edition of Green is Good. We're so honored to have with us today Lauren Engel, the marketing specialist from Door to Door Organics. Welcome to Green is Good, Lauren. Well, thank you very much for having me. And thank you for bringing these beautiful apples from door to door. My pleasure. Um, you know, Lauren, before we get talking about your great service and all that you do there and all that Door to Door Organics does for our communities, Talk a little bit about the Lauren Engel story and journey leading up to you get becoming the marketing specialist there. Where did this whole thing come about? It's been theme throughout my life, I think. Okay. And actually, in 2013, I spent quite a bit of time in Europe working on organic farms. And then I, shortly after that, I started working with door-to-door -door organics. Um, I also grew up in an environment with my dad um, raising plants in his greenhouses, my grandparents having gardens. So I've definitely always had a love for food and taking care of the environment. That's great. Did you grow up in the Illinois area? Just outside of Milwaukee in Wisconsin. Milwaukee, that's great. So let's talk about door to door. Um, and for our listeners out there and viewers, you can find Lauren's great company at doortodoororganics.com. Doortodoororganics.com. How does door to door work and how does the mission and what is the mission of door to door organics? The mission behind door to door organics is empowering people to eat good food. So we are an online grocer, uh, we do delivery. 50 miles around Chicago, so throughout the Chicagoland area, Chicago and the suburbs. And all of the produce that we carry is certified organic, but we carry a wide array of other grocery items too, like artisan breads and humanely raised meats, dairy products, um, dry goods, everything that you can think of. But at minimum, everything is sustainably produced. Mm. So no artificial colorants or preservatives in anything that we carry, no high fructose corn syrup. We have standards. And when did Door to Door start? The company itself has been around actually since 97, so quite a while. Uh, we've been in the Chicago area since 2010. Where was it started? It was started on the East Coast, around Philadelphia. Got it, and, and it came just to Chicago land area 2010? Yes. Okay, and how many communities does it serve nationally now, approximately? We're in five different regions around the U.S., so okay. we're in 10 different states and um, more than 30 cities. Explain now how it works uh, in Chicago. So for our listeners out there that want to enjoy it in Chicago or somewhere else, how does the whole system work? You go to the website and what happens? Everything happens online until your box shows up at your door. Wow. So you jump on our website, create an account. It's a simple process. You choose, you start with your produce box and you decide whether you'd like just fruits or just vegetables or a mixture of both. Um, and if you'd like it delivered weekly or every other week. You tell us your delivery address, give us any special instructions, and then you go on and order your food and it shows up at your door. How soon does it come to your door? The latest that you can place an order is noon the day before your delivery day. Okay. So your delivery day will be picked out based on your location, where you live. Okay. Um, for me, I get my deliveries on Monday, so I have until Sunday at noon to place my order. Great. And Monday it comes and... Is it a window of time that it's going to be arri arriving at your house? Do you know like sort of when it's coming? So you don't have to be home in order to receive the delivery. Right. Uh, we do deliveries 8 a.m. to 6 p.m. is roughly when we, are, we go there. Um, you can leave any special instructions, like I said before. So for me, I don't even have a doorman in my building. They leave it under the bushes out front. The driver oh, knows <laughs> where to leave it, and it works out just fine. It's like a little bit of an Easter egg. It is. It oh is. It's uh, like a present showing up at your door each week, definitely. And so you, um, and, and delivery, we're going to go over this again, is free. Free delivery. Oh no charge. Oh my gosh. How can you, how can you beat that? Um, so now I'm looking at these gorgeous apples here. I mean, these are just beautiful apples in this, in this wonderful crate. What, how many items do you offer on the door-to-door -door site? We're currently carrying over 3,500 items. Wow. And that's constantly growing. So it's everything is sustainable, organic, and non-GMO? All of the produce is certified organic. And being certified organic, it has to be non-GMO, yes. Gotcha. And, and talk a little bit about the variety. You talked about everything from these wonderful apples to our artisanal breads. What else do you have in between that, that we could order? 
A lot of local items, so we carry things like granola from Milk and Honey made here in Chicago, um, peanut butters and other nut butters from um, a company in Michigan, a lot of local meats and uh, dairy products from Wisconsin, wow. Indiana, um, even Illinois. So That's wonderful. Yeah, a lot of local products, but we carry some of the bigger national brands too that people are really familiar with, with such as Bob's Red Mill, um, all sorts of gluten-free items and including their flowers that they produce. Now, under the door-to-door -door brand, do you sell any of your products through other sources, through other than the website, or no? Is it only just, um, is it just through the website, and then um, uh, and just in the markets that we desc described at the top of the show? Everything happens online. So until it shows up at your door, unless you have an interaction with customer service over the phone, you're just using the website to place your order, which is a great thing because people are getting more and more familiar with digital technology and more comfortable with it too. And I assume that it could work right off of their mobile technology as well. Yep, we're actually going to be launching a mobile app shortly. Um, you Perfect. can definitely use the website currently on your phone as you'd like, but um, we're, we have a mobile optimized website that'll be coming and out soon. And how often can you order? Uh, your delivery at most is once a week, but a wonderful thing about the service too is that there's no commitment. You're not buying into a subscription when you start with us. You can place an order once if you like, see how it is, and you can continue um, either every week or every other week. If I wanted to, if I had some unexpected guest stop by that spent a couple days, and I wanted to order more, can I then pay an extra fee and have it delivered twice that week? We are only able to do deliveries once a week. Okay, um, right now. Right. right. However, what you can do is if you know that you're going to have those guests in town, say you usually get a bitty box, which is our smallest right. box size. Right. Uh, feeds one to two people with produce for a week. Right. Maybe you'd want to increase it to a large box, which we say feeds a family of vegetarians or is right. suitable for a party for, for that week specifically. As the marketing specialist, what's your call to action, Lauren? What do you do for door to door? Are you marketing to the public at large so I sign up for the service? Or are you the one going out and getting the organic and the green farms to sign up, the local, the local, the localness to the whole uh, uh, equation? So we're a company of about 300 employees. Wow. I'm just the marketing person here in Chicago, so I get to go out and do a lot of our events, like Green Festival here. Um, we've been at a number of other places. We were just recently at the Chicago Marathon, uh, so that was a lot of fun. So you're getting the, B, the B2C people. Other people in your company are getting the B2B. They're getting the organic farms and the, local, the localness. To, to make Correct. the specialness of your brand and all the different markets that you serve. Exactly, so we actually do have a local buyer uh, who goes out and seeks out these local companies who are making great products and getting them into our boxes. Uh, how, and is that, the, is that the secret sauce here? Do your clients that you sign up, since you're the one talking to the consumers, are they the ones really jazzed by that? Do they really, um, are they, do they get really uh, excited that you're using local brands and supporting them? And are you making videos of those brands? And are they up on the website as well? Are people able to see? Is it very transparent, all the localness to each market that you're in? Definitely. We actually have some local pages on our website where people can search and see all the different brands that we carry that are from around this area. Chicago has got a lot of pride, and it's a wonderful thing because it's a great city. Um, so we, we really have a lot of vendors who are very involved Involved. They're interested in what we're doing and supporting our business, and at the same time, we're very interested in supporting them. So we will go and do visits with them. I've gotten the chance to go and see a number of farms and, and um, stop by a few vendors and see their facilities and how they're actually making these products. And what is considered local? How many, you know, is it only then brands that are homegrown in Illinois? that serve Chicago or are you leave an allowed out of the state border if it fits certain criteria? So local is generally defined as 350 miles from whatever central point you're talking about. So from Chicago, we actually do pull um, a lot of Illinois pro products, but also from Wisconsin, Iowa, Indiana, Michigan. Without giving away any secrets or anything like that, when you started at zero and you came to the Chicago land area, how many people, approximately how many weekly users do you have now in the Chicago area? All I can say is that it's constantly growing and we're very pleased with where it's at. Got it, and and um, and, and and the velocity I, I assume is 
is are people really responding really well? Is it, is it growing fast and people really love feeling a connection to their produce and to the food that they eat? Our customers are very passionate. They love the service. We really get constantly positive feedback. Um, and I think that has to do with the quality of the produce that we're giving them, the variety of products that we have, the wonderful customer service team that we've got. And so um, some of our best marketing is word of mouth. You know, we get people who are telling all of their friends and family, inviting other people to join our service. They get $15, the new person gets $15 in credit through us. Um, so that's a great marketing tool for Tell us. Tell us a little bit about viral marketing in an analog way. If I'm living in an apartment building in Chicago and I see this outside of my, my uh, neighbor's door, is there a very big viral marketing effect that's in an analog way? If I see that there, if I see your beautiful crate underneath your bushes in front of your place, I'm going to say, what is that? I'll go to your website or I'll ask my friend and then I start ordering also. Is that, does it work that way? Oh, definitely. I mean, so many people at events will come up to us and say, oh, I see your van in my neighborhood. It, these are bright orange vans that go driving around the city and suburbs. Or people will say, yeah, my neighbor gets you guys. Um, and so they'll be curious and we get to tell them more at events like this. How, how important is, you know, we have a, a, a great chance to be at today's wonderful event here at the Green Festival in Chicago, Lauren. How important is an event like this to your marketing ability to get the word out? Are these really um, great uh, platforms for you to touch a lot of people in one or two or three days? Definitely. It's uh a great way to interact with people and get them to fully understand the service. There are a lot of people who think that we're just produce. Um, produce is a huge component of what we do, but it's it's not everything. We carry so many other products beyond that that it can be a full grocery trip. Um, so it's when we have these interactions with people at events like this, we really get. Uh, give them a comprehensive understanding of what it is that we do and they are able to put a face to this company as well. Usually their interactions are limited to the dr delivery drivers that we have. So, um, you know, we do our best to make sure that people do feel connected to this service in other ways too. That makes sense. What else, besides the food, which is very important and obviously just splendid, what other things does door-to-door um, -door organics do to be green? So all of the materials that we use in when we package these items, they go into cardboard boxes um, and we use products that can either be fully recycled or reused by us. So customers will leave out their boxes with their next delivery and we'll pick them up. We reuse things like um, glass milk cartons, we use dry ice to ship all of our frozen products and so the insulation that goes into there we reuse, ice packs, all of that. And then on top of that, um, we're, we do donations of fresh produce to local food banks around the area. Oh. Um, which is a hard thing often for them to come by. So each week, um, in, in 2013, we donated 60,000 pounds of fresh produce to local food banks, wow. which is tremendous. And each week we have more pan uh, food pantries coming back and doing pickups through us. Wow. Anything that we aren't able to either donate or hasn't been sold already, we can also compost if it's anything that's damaged. Um, so we do composting too. And do you have your own composting uh, apparatus and system set up or do you have an out you outsource that? We outsource it to a company called Collective Resource. They do a lot of really great work throughout the city working with big organizations. And do you have one big warehouse here in the Chicago land area, which is your distribution center? Yep, we've got a beautiful 20,000, 25,000 square foot warehouse in Bridgeport that we just moved into um, back in early summer. And it's been a great new home for us. And is it eco-friendly as well? Or is it, is it I assume with Door-to-Door uh, -door Organics, green and sustainability or cultural and DNA issues. Definitely. So the building was set up to be green and, and sustainable uh, from the ground up? Yeah, so we moved into a warehouse that's divided into four different units. The warehouse itself actually has a green roof, um, which is great for uh, um, keep it, maintaining temperature and everything sure. inside. And then, um, uh, and then the vans, are the vans, are the, you know, now with all the wonderful technology out there uh, with the cars and the trucks and the Teslas. Uh, tell, tell, tell our listeners how your vans uh, are eco-friendly. 
So the vans um, are, I can't speak to their fuel efficiency exactly. I do know that they are the, as fuel efficient as possible. Got it. But every van that uh, goes out from our company delivers about 65 boxes. In one in one route. Right. So that wow. means that for every box that we're delivering, somebody is not taking that trip to the grocery store and would likely otherwise be driving. So we're taking all of those cars off the road with just one vehicle. That's a great, great point. You know, how many events like this do you do a year, Lauren? How many events are do you see as uh, great ways to uh, evangelize your great product, door-to-door -door organics, that you think there's a great market uh, there at that, you know, in one compressed time period with uh, one compressed group of people? There are so many events in the Chicago area. Uh, we're fortunate to be in a city also that appreciates sustainability and has a, an understanding of that. Right. So there are lots of events. We're not limited by lack of opportunities here by any means. Um, I'd say we attend big events like this, about 10 to 12 a year, but we wow. also do donations and participate in lots of other smaller events throughout the year too. And the marketing specialists in other communities across America that you serve, about 10 communities or so, or 10 states, do you um, weekly or monthly meet with them on, you know, on a conference call and trade best practices and, and, uh, and what's going on? We're in constant contact, yep. Um, so whether it's a meeting or shooting emails back and forth, we're always trying to get a grasp on what other people are doing and borrow their ideas and see if they're applicable to the regions that we're in. Yeah, you know, Lauren, you mentioned at the top of the show that you spent some time in Europe mm -hmm. doing organic farming. Where did you spend time and how did that profoundly affect this, you know, your direction and this this great experience that you're having here? I think it was about seeing it firsthand and seeing it from the perspective of a vendor or a producer. Mm. Um, I was in Ireland for quite a while, wow. a while um, on an island and they were raising grass-fed beef cattle. Oh. Yeah, it was... That sounds like... Like idyllic. Ideal situation, beautiful. The, the happiest cows you could possibly imagine. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, so it was really just a wonderful experience to see um, the love that goes into producing an animal and then the meat that that, that animal provides and the quality of it is just um, unbeatable. Then I was also in France making goat cheese and working in a, in a boulangerie making bread. It was pretty incredible. You had a very high bar, so you, you had to come back and really make a important choice after those two experiences. Well, I know what good food is. Yeah, so, no kidding. Yeah, and I think those experiences gave me the ability to see that and to recognize that and the, the love that the vendors that we work with here put into their products. You know, Lauren, you were down to the last two minutes or so. You know, t talk a little bit about the, about the demographic who's signing up. Is it the 50-plus? Uh, is it the millennials? Who's signing up on a day-to-day on -a -day basis? If you could break it down or categorize, categorize it any one, one way. It's really a variety. Okay. It's across the board. Um, a lot of the people that are attracted by our service are people with really busy schedules. And so um, families in their early 30s with young kids who just who don't want to spend that time going to the store and would prefer to be at home but love to cook meals and want to um, pr uh, provide a healthy environment for their families too. So we get people like that who are also digitally savvy. We get millennials who are uh, completely tech savvy and also are just really intrigued by the idea of being able to buy their groceries online. But we also have a lot of older people as well who love our service and appreciate the fact that they don't have to go out to the store um, and make that trip, especially in the very harsh cold months of winter here in Chicago. And what's the future hold for door-to-door -door organics? Last, last question. Um, uh, all throughout the nation and, and soon maybe the world? <laughs> yeah, we'll see. Continued growth, definitely. And also focusing on really making our Chicago region the best that we possibly can. There's a lot of competition in this market, um, especially here, right here in Chicago. And we face different challenges than in other regions, too, that we're currently in. Um, so it's a, it's a bit of just figuring out exactly what works for Chicago, but I think that we are definitely on the right track. Well, thank you, Lauren Engel, for... Uh for bringing us your story today and the story of Door to Door Organics for our listeners out there and our viewers. Uh, go to www.doortodoororganics.com 
and bring these kind of great fresh organics to your door someday soon.